Do you like coffee? I love coffee. Do you like coffee? I love coffee. I had a cup of coffee which changed my life. Drinking coffee is one of life's pleasures. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the taste. It's simply the smell. I just find the smell of roasted coffee one of the most fascinating things out there. You wake up in the morning and you say, OK, I can't talk to anybody until I have my first cup of coffee. Want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. So although there are now 125 species of coffee, we only actually use two species to produce the beverage coffee, the drink. There's Arabica coffee and there's Robusta coffee. Arabica is a very special plant. It's actually a hybrid formed between two quite different species. Those plants came together in a forest somewhere maybe a million years ago, maybe 50,000 years ago, we don't exactly know, and it, it appears that that union, that unique event, happened just once. It's a very special plant in that respect. One of the things that's not generally very well known is the fact that Arabica coffee originated in Ethiopia. So that's its natural home. And from the 15th century onwards, it was taken out of Ethiopia via the Yemen to Southeast Asia, to Central America, to South America. During that process, the genetic diversity of Arabica was greatly diminished because in many cases, plantations were established on a single plant. The problem with that is that those plantations have very low genetic diversity. And if you have low genetic diversity, you have low tolerance to pests and diseases. Everywhere else in the world grows coffee and does really well at it and it tastes really nice. But when that has a problem, where do you go? And the answer is Ethiopia, where it all started. In all the plantations around the world, there is less than 1% of the genetic variation that you can find today in Ethiopia. Aaron approached me um, with some ideas of what was happening with coffee in the wild and saying, well, we're getting a lot of reports from farmers saying that uh, coffee is starting to uh, degrade at lower altitudes. In Ethiopia specifically, the climate is, is changing quite a lot. It's about one degree change in temperature, and then that changes the taste of coffee completely. We don't have a measurement of the impact of climate change. So we need to put in a monitoring system to understand the effects of climate change. Not the predictions, but actually what is happening. Is there signs of stress? Is there signs of extra disease or anything else that's going on that's affecting that coffee? Unless we do that, we won't understand what's happening and we won't be able to do anything about it. We're here in a semi-forest coffee production area and we're looking at some very stressed plants. It's 32 degrees, which is too hot for optimum coffee production. The leaves are wilting and in some cases they're, they're just falling off. So the model had done a really, really good job at identifying a lot of those coffee areas. So it's saying that plot of forest coffee by 2080 is not going to be good for forest coffee anymore. When we published this paper, uh, we were quite surprised by the publicity for it. It was absolutely huge. Looking at, you know, 800,000 tweets, 1,000 Facebook hits. The birth of coffee starting in Ethiopia, that was something that I had not heard about. I couldn't imagine a day when we couldn't get coffee from Ethiopia. The whole coffee research at Q has gathered huge momentum, so now we are deeply embedded in industry issues. What we can supply and the, the information we can supply to people out there from the Q's historic base is incredibly important for making decisions as to where we can serve, where we put our effort in. Uh, lots of people say to me, well, it's just a beverage. It's just a drink, so what? But the so what is coffee production supports the livelihoods of 25 million farming families worldwide. That's more than 100 million people, which is just incredible. And they say something like 32 different pairs of hands are involved from picking coffee to making a cup of coffee. The environment will not be the same in, in 2080 as it is now. We actually may know what the environment might be. So we can actually say, well, if we're going to really look after coffee, 
do it here, or actually look at moving it here. Something can be done about it. We have the information about it, we have time as well. 